that this is what a real miracle feels like. Come on, sweep your hand and say, you don't know what I've been through. Oh, come on, oh, come on, oh, you're just to be holding your hand in church right now. Now let go of that hand and lift your hand and say, fuck you. I said, you sure you want me to come over there? I said, amen. 
And he said, I know what the Lord said, but I want to tell you something. They misrepresented the prophet, amen. I'm one of the nicest guys. I'm the most intrigued people that you can meet. But when I get behind the poor pit, the sacred desk, and it comes to going against the devil, not against you, but against the devil, I'm dogmatic. Say amen. I'm an OG. Y'all ain't talking to me. <laughs> amen. I love everyone. And let me tell you something. I come to get the babies tonight. I'm talking about all these young folks. I come to get y'all tonight. I come to snatch you out of the hands of the devil because there's some wounded folk. I saw you dancing, but you're hurting. But I tell 15 folk to say, I'm coming out tonight. Jump up and hop it and sit right back down. Going through, you can't, you know, you can't go through without coming out. You understand what I'm saying? Look at somebody and say, I know you're going through something, but tell your name, tell them I'm on my way out of it. Give God praise right there. Amen. The Holy Amen. And so I went through something, praise God, and they found a lump, amen, in a very sensitive part of my body. And I was going through, I'm preaching all the time. I'm giving God my all, I'm praying for folk, I'm seeing miracles, I'm talking about miracles that we, um, that folk talk about, I'm seeing this and, and the enemy hit me and so I called my doctor and told my doctor, um, you know what was going on, we scheduled an appointment um, on the 28th of this month, I was going to go in, but the pain was so excruciating, I called again and this was a specialist, one of the top specialists in the city. And he allowed me to go in Tuesday, man. I got there Tuesday and they did a procedure. And so my wife and my family, you know, they pro me. They look out for me. You understand? And uh, they were saying, well, I know you want to go. I know how you are. They know when it comes to church. See, I got an addictive personality. I'm a whole dope. I don't think I'm going to have to come down here. Now, you know, but I was on drugs for almost 20 years. I was shooting hammer, head smoking the crack pipe. You understand what I'm saying? I, 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 drinking alcohol, I popped every kind of pill. Listen, my heart didn't know whether it was going to start speeding up or just stop. So I don't play games. And I, man, I put down there and they know I come to church and you have to carry me. I enjoyed you, man. I enjoyed your ministry. Aren't you pastor now? Oh, God bless you. Come on, first lady. God bless you. Let me pray. God will bless you. Amen. Go bless the work. Amen. I can ask for it. Amen. And um, I'm feeling better now. I feel like I'm at home because my inheritance is one of them that are sanctified. And, 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 and you know, so so I was such, such a hardcore drug addict until the dope dealers would tell me, I ain't selling you no more dope. I'm serious. I'm not, I'm not fluffing. This is serious. I was out there. And I enjoyed what I was doing. And when I came here, I become, there's a scripture in the Bible that said, I talk about being addicted to God. And I'm addicted to God. Y'all can call me extremist or whatever you want. But, but I'm addicted to church. So they would say, I don't think you're going to be able to go. So I said, with all y'all wait, let's wait. And while they waited, I'm praying. And I'm saying, God, I need to strip. I got to go. I got to be the convocation this next week. And then I told this young man about the service. And, and let me tell you, after two, it was rough, man. I should have listened to my family. I didn't let nobody drive me. And I, I couldn't hardly drive back, man. I'm bleeding and all, you know, stitches. I got stitches in me right now. But I'm here. And God ain't going to let one of them bust. Y'all can't talk about me. Hallelujah. And, and because I wanted to be here because I know that God, I'm on the same. Yeah. And God gonna do something for many of you all. And let me tell you something, there are several of you on this side with sicknesses in your body, but by the next time you go back to the doctor, they ain't gonna be there. They can give you another report. Somebody ought to praise God for them over there. Come on, somebody. And so I'm here and I'm not gonna be long, but I wanna give you what God says. Now listen, we're gonna shout, but let me give you some, some instruction because I need you all to understand that when you are anointed, the text is talking about God pouring the Spirit out upon all flesh. 
But I need you to understand that when you are anointed, there's another assignment that's been sent after your anointing. Oh, that's right. That's right. You understand? And what we have to do now is position ourselves, and, and the preachers cannot get up here playing games. We've got to give instruction from God for our babies because if you're the next generation or the now generation, you've got to be in the know and you've got to know what's real and what's not real. Oh yeah, I, I know everybody want to be the big stunner, the big baller, the shot caller, and I know you know you want to wear red bottoms and all that stuff, and ain't nothing wrong with that. But listen, the anointing is different. Can I talk to y'all for a few more? I promise you ain't gonna hurt you now. I'm gonna be that Sister Marissa did so good with with that 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 text. Did she do good? Clap your hands, bro. Let me let me let me go over the loop right quick. I promise you, I'm gonna be about 25, 30 minutes unless we're gonna be out. Uh, um, um, let me let me let me let me let me, let me make sure hallelujah, that I got the right scripture. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Luke chapter number 22. Luke now, he is known as one of the, uh, his book is noted as a synoptic gospel, meaning that um, he uh, uh, Matthew, James, Matthew, Luke, Mark, and then John. John gospel stands alone. In the beginning was the word, word was with God, and the word was God. Luke's epistle, or the epistle from Bible, is right, the epistle according, or uh, the epistle according to Luke. Because Luke was not an eyewitness of Jesus, but he was a great historian as well as a physician. Luke's writing teaches us that Jesus was all God, but he was all man. He was informational in his approach to the text. And I like Luke's style because um, he was bold in his writing, in his teaching, but it was effective. I used to uh, be uh, over the jail ministry. I was over the outreach ministry, ministry for Bishop Wright, and we would go to the jail. And, and you know, in the jail, when you do a jail ministry, they tell you they have a podium here, piano there. They have seats for the civilians and all of the criminals. You know, they over there. They tell you, they say, well, you can't go, but you know, go right here and stop. And at the time, the late Bishop Ronald Wilcox, um, he was over that. You know, the chapter there, and I get, I get, you know, behind the spirit, and I'm walking back. I'm laying hands on the inmates and prophesying to the, uh, to the, to the turnkeys, and and, and and God was moving in. And what He shows me is that there's a boldness, and when you're sincere, people will listen. The reason why people can't take strong teaching now, because you can't teach strong and live wrong. I wish I, 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 I don't know what, what, what grade y'all graduate up on over here, God. But did you hear what I said? You can't preach strong and live wrong. And young folks, you understand what parents do in moderation, your children will do in excess. Come on, somebody. Y'all ain't trying. They watch what you do. I got no help here. So, and so I have to become a slave to living right. Yes, I'm human, and yes, the devil comes at me, but I understand the responsibility, Pastor. Watch here, Luke chapter number uh, 22. And if y'all don't mind, because uh, y'all gonna dance some more tonight, because y'all have to dance with me, because I can't dance, you know. Uh, stand for the reading of the word. I promise you. I'm not going to read but two verses. Luke chapter number 22, verses 31 and 32. When you have that, shout a happy. My God, thank God for them cell phones and Sunday school. And come on, somebody. Luke chapter 22, verse 31, 32. Reads as thus. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, oh Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as we come here, family. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. Come here, and when thou art not ill, and when thou art converted, strengthen, strengthen thy brethren. We directed your attention to verse 31, Simon, Simon, 
Behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as we look at somebody and say, neighbor, the devil is a liar. That's my text. Y'all have a seat. Amen. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. And I need you to ponder that with me for these fleeting moments that no matter what um, you're going through, I don't care what position you're in. I heard uh, the daughter say that, you know, that she had struggles and everybody has struggles. And the truth of the matter, everybody does have struggles. I don't care who you are. You understand? But I want to tell you that the devil is a liar. I'm going to help you tonight. Is that all right? The devil also referred uh, to as Satan is best known as the personification of evil and the nemesis of good. Good people everywhere. His image and story have evolved over the years. The devil has been called many different names in various cultures. Beelzebub, Lucifer, Satan, to name just a few, with various physical descriptions, including horns and hoof feet. Uh, 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 but I need to tell y'all something. You know, they taught me that such school, not thought the devil, you understand, was red with a long tail, a pitchfork, and horns and things. And you know what I got in church and y'all say it for real? I found out that the devil looked like some of the deacons. Come on, somebody. He looked like missionaries. He looked like y'all can do. I'm going to start it. Okay, I'm going to start it. I'm going to leave that alone. But this benevolent being and his legions of demons continue to strike fear in people from all walks of life as this antithesis of all good things. Although the devil is present in some form in many religions and can be compared to the mythological, or mythological gods, he's arguably best known for his role against Christianity. In modern biblical translations, the devil is the adversary of God and God's people. It is commonly thought that the devil first showed up in the Bible in the book of Genesis as the serpent convinced Eve, who then convinced Adam to eat the forbidden fruit from the tree of knowledge. In the Garden of Eden, as the story goes, after Eve fell for the devil's convincing way, she and Adam were banished from the garden of Eden and doomed to mortality. Let me give you this here right quick, this footnote. See, when God looks at us, and I heard Wiggins talking about how sharp he was, well, I've been trying to get him to buy me a couple of seats for years. He ain't gave in yet. But when God looks at us, family, let me give you this. He don't care about this. He don't care about the external. He's after your anointing. Well, look how God wants it. See, what God wants, God wants that when he looks at you, he wants to see a reflection of him in you. He don't want to see the flesh. He wants to see a reflection of himself in you. Y'all ain't talking to me. Because he's trying to help us because he realizes that no flesh, I don't care how good it looks, I don't care how great the shape it is in, can enter in the heaven. And so God wants to see us. And the only way he can see us, really, and, and, and because no man can see God and live, that's not. But when he looks at Jesus, who is the debt satisfied, the propitiation for our sins, when he looks at Jesus, Jesus has to get in the middle. Here's God. Here you. Here's Jesus. And when God looks through the blood, I ain't got no help around here. He can stand to see us. I ain't got no help. And so what we got to understand now, we got to stop playing like the devil ain't real. Oh, I ain't got no help here. And you cannot trust in your flesh. I ain't got no help here. You look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you cute, but don't play no, but don't play yourself close. Come on, somebody. I, 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 I know you can. I know you think you devil proof. I know you don't play. I know you made up in your mind. I know you determined. I know you got on the altar. And you told God you never was gonna do that thing again. But let me tell you something, don't play with your flesh. Can I help y'all babies tonight? Can I help y'all tonight? Don't play. So the baby says it's going to get rough on, on the devil tonight. Say amen. 
Now, don't take it personal. It's going to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, this will be hard on the devil and every demon on tonight. You ought to give God praise right there. Don't play with your flesh because the devil is going to do enough of that on his own. Have we got a witness? Many Christians believe the devil was once a beautiful angel named Lucifer who defied God and fell from great from grace. This assumption that he is a fallen angel is often based uh, on the book of uh, Isaiah in the book uh, in the Bible, which says, "How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations?" I got no help here. Hallelujah. How did he fall? And, 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 and so it is natural, hallelujah, that we hear this term, you know, especially in the church community. Come here. The devil is a liar. Yeah. How many of y'all ever heard that? Uh -huh. That the devil is a liar. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The devil is a liar. Used as a hot repudiation of some statement, stance, or opinion as being a lie or deception. In the spirit realm, John 844 lets us know he is the father of lies. In other words, he wants to deceive us and he wants to kill us softly. The devil wants to kill you while you're enjoying your ride to hell. But there's a scripture in the Bible that says, Tell my brethren, the last guy I found on record in hell, he said, Word and said, Tell my brethren, don't come to this place of torments. And many times they talked when I came up about the book of Revelations and all of this, that it was a book of hell and fire and brimstone and nobody wanted to, 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 to preach about Revelation. And I come to, I come to, I come to give you a hookup. The Revelation is the greatest book to read because what Revelation is, is what Revelation says. Revelation reveals to you what's been there all the time, but you didn't see it. Jesus is trying to give us a hookup. And so he tells Peter, look, dude, I pray for you. Because I, I know you're Petros. I know you got it going on. But 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 Peter, the devil, did not, okay, y'all, that's too much Bible. I gotta get street with y'all, right? Uh-huh. So 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 listen. Uh Nene and Shakika, the devil is after you. He after you, he after your weed, he after your press on nails. Come over here, he's after you. <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. He wants to kill us softly. He wants us to enjoy our trip into his traps. He's trying to get God's people to feel right. The Bible, and, and you know, you got young folk that say, oh man, the Bible's outdated, stale, boring, it's just routine. So people are using terms like, I I'm sick of church as usual. And, and so now many pastors are moving Catholic boundaries and replacing them with props. They want to appease the flesh, y'all ain't talking about I'm going to talk about my, my own kind now. We don't want to preach the truth now. And, 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 and what bothers me is, and is when I go to the bank, I, I go there to get money out, put money in, or see if I can borrow some money. When I go to the hamburger joint, even if I get some fries and a coat, I go to get a burger. I ain't got no help right here. When I go to the filling station, I ain't playing no numbers. Come on, somebody. But I go to get some gas. Come on here. If my problem is, I don't understand how that we can accept everything except for the truth when we come in church. This is the place where you're supposed to get the truth. But the reason the young folk now, the 21st century young folk, I don't die. Hallelujah. I like they are because they haven't seen us live what we preach. I got three amens. I'm leaving y'all. I'm coming over here. That's all right. He's the father of life. He's an artificial life. He's life, but he's leading you to death. You remember, amen, those fly traps and the bug traps, they are lit. But the warmth from the life is artificial. 
but it has an intoxicating effect that draws the bugs in. And as soon as that light comes on, the bugs start hitting that light and dying just like that. And that's what the enemy wants to do. He comes as an angel of light, but he's not the real. Y'all ain't saying nothing. That's why y'all ain't talking to me. That's why, praise God, we got this, 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 this place. And let me tell y'all, babies, ain't nothing wrong with wearing your shorts and your, and there's nothing wrong with, with women wearing pants. And, and there's nothing wrong if you want to wear the kind with your knees out. I might try that, but my legs so skinny, my knees so bad, I'm going to cover them up. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Hallelujah. But let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Don't let them remember when we coming into God's house. This is God's house. Yeah. Come on, come on. See, 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 the reason that that, that that Cain's offering was not received is because Cain had no regard who he was sacrificing to. So now you got them, they sit up in church with their hats on, y'all don't say nothing. Wrong theology. Because y'all want to talk about, well, it's in your, it's in your heart, not when you with your heart, right? Your hat come off when you come inside. Okay, let me give it to you like this. When you go to the courthouse, they tell you to take your hat off. They tell, and you take it off. They tell you, turn your cell phone off. You can't even put it on mute. Turn it off. And you turn it off. And if you're going to do that for the judge, what about the judge? Oh, y'all ain't talking to that. Hallelujah. You see, if the devil is out to sift you, so the sifting process is, 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 is easy. <laughs> yeah. Can I get this word? It's seducing. That's some of y'all got kids, y'all got. You got seduced. Come on, somebody. And come on, women, come here. You know, I don't care if he if he peels you. See, a man is cut, a woman is peeled. A man, you have to cut him. They say, oh, I ain't gonna deal with him. He got a worm in him. But a woman is peeled. Pretty prophet, okay. So I'm at the door over here, and every Sunday she come here. I said, Ooh, how you doing, sister? Wow, you look good. You know, you smell good. Really? You doing all right? Okay. So the next day, she tripping now. Because she's saved and sanctified and Holy Ghost filled. And she's on the ministry board. And I come back the next time I see her. Is that your fragrance? Oh my God, your fragrance trail is just wonderful. And so now she will she fit. You understand? Because she she say, I'm sanctified. Who do you think I am? I don't play. I don't play. I'm sanctified. So she go. She start coming in on the other door. But see, when they when, when she come in on that door, ain't nobody telling them that. She just know. Hey, sis, how you doing? And when she going through and feeling like some of you feel unappreciated. Yeah. Oh, come on. Preach. Preach for every day, preach. <laughs> unappreciated. Like you the black sheep. The one that everybody makes fun of. You think you got to do more to be accepted. But you ain't getting that over there. So eventually, I know you say, but you end up back over here. How you doing? I'm doing well. Well, listen, what do you think about us going out? Okay. Where you want to go? Yeah? Listen, let's do something different. Let's, let's go to and have a, a lunch by the riverside. The reason you date 
it's, it's not, you know, I know he cute, I know she fine, but we may not get along. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying I, you know, you understand? So, so the dating process should always be in a place where you can keep your sanctification. Come on here. And if you ain't gonna put your claws down in the restroom, come on, that's where you need to. I will. 
realize that they wasn't going to the clubs. They wasn't at the bar. So ready to get turned on at. I need about 50 folk to jump up and say the devil is a liar and sit right back down. Right up under here. And then you preach against it. Hallelujah. Preaching against Jesus in his own name. I promise you, give me 10 more minutes, I'm going to go. Hooked on foolishness. I want to just help you. That's all I want to do. Simulation and stimulation. Simulation. Something that similar. It looks like it. Come on. It acts like it. And then the stimulation, it sounds like it. Now, listen. Boo boo, can I talk to you? I love the battle. I love Jonah, see? Come on, somebody. All right, but I got you. See, see, I talked to my son when uh, holiday dinner, we were over. His fiance and my children were around. My mom was talking at the table about the dinner. And uh, I told him, I said, you know, the young guys here, y'all would have stood a chance in my day. Because all y'all so called love stuff call the girls out the name. Dog them out. Y'all call them chicken heads and all kind of stuff. Pots and all kind of stuff. And they up there telling me, he's so fine. Girl, look at them eyes. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, y'all would have got no play in my day. Because the music that they sung back then, if you didn't have a conversation, it helped your cup. Y'all ain't talking to me. Turn off the lights. Boom, boom, and like that. I see y'all been to a seminar. I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done with that, y'all. And then y'all, I see, I found out about it. You hear what I'm saying? Stimulation is stimulation. And many of our churches are caught up in stimulation and simulation and never really experiencing the authentic move of the glory of God. Can I say this here? Y'all ain't gonna like this. But the Bible said that we're not supposed to mix. But fellowship do not have the darkness. We're not talking about when you're going out to witness. We're talking about that you're hanging out. Here, you were sinner, but you had out to work. See, see, see. I don't understand if bitter and sweet can't come out the same. How can we play Frankie Beverly? Happy feelings. In the sanctuary, and then 20 minutes later, go and say, Down at the cross, where well, come on, somebody. Okay. I'm not saying you won't go to hell for listening to music. What I am saying is, you gotta be careful when you mix it. Yeah. Oh, Sifting, y'all ain't gonna say nothing. Yeah. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Hallelujah. 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 We're becoming addicted to sin but allergic to God. But the devil is alive because God's raising up men and women who are in here tonight who are contending for the faith. We're coming to snatch you out tonight of what the devil has trapped you in. We should enjoy church. I got no help here. But we can't leave the godly structure. Did y'all hear what I'm saying? Enjoy church. Have fun. But don't leave the stance of God. Hallelujah. In the name of being popular. I feel cool spirits now. The devil is running y'all. Clap your hands right there. He's on the run. We backing him up right now. I know y'all don't like this because it's coming against your theology. Because you want to have one foot in the world and one foot in the church. But there's a scripture in the Bible that says when they stand before Jesus, they'll say, didn't I cast out devils? I didn't I got no help here. But he's going to say, you're part of me. I never knew you. Y'all ain't going to like this. Uh, my wife probably over there praying for me, saying, man, hey, Richie, you praying for me? You can't leave the godly structure when you're a disciple, meaning a follower of Jesus. Another word for a disciple, watch this, come here. It means to be a student of a discipline. A student of a discipline. A student. That means I learn the discipline and how I get better. How the musicians 
get better at what they do, they become subject to it. They come up under and they put the time in. They can sing, man, that man can sing now all night strong. I can probably be ready to pass out. <laughs> but he's disciplined yeah. to the crowd. Yeah. You understand? We have to become a disciple, follower of Jesus, but we also have to become a student of the discipline. Are you listening to me? No, no. Family, we need to stop living it. The thing is, what do we do after this? Get living. Yeah. It needs to stop from the pulpit. Can I talk for about the pulpit for a minute? It's a setting, but I need to warn everybody in here, the greatest danger to believers in this hour is not in the clubs, it's not none of that, it's not homosexuality, it ain't drug use. The greatest danger to the church now is what's coming from behind the pulpit. I find somebody that say, I feel that thing, I feel that thing. No matter what you do, I'm supposed to be living above the board. The deception is much of the teaching, child of God. We've got to be different, not common in the sense that we pollute ourselves with perverse living. We're taught that you don't go everywhere. You, 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 you listen, y'all. Don't, don't play with me, y'all. So don't play. Listen. There's no such thing as a sociable drink. I know it's hard in here right now. Please don't go nowhere, family. Don't y'all do me like that. Because, because when you deal with drugs, and alcohol is one of the worst, alcohol or pharmacy or pharmaceutical or pharmacist is another word for that is sorcery. Sorcery or witchcraft is sent to alter you. And anything that alters your state, sea rock, curry salt, how is Mr. Queen, cognac lit with fire, or oh, y'all don't know nothing about that. <laughs> Hallelujah, EMJ, what y'all call out of a mimosa, come on, you can't drink that. Because you ain't going to be sociable after the evening. Yeah, but, but we having a honeymoon. I understand you having a honeymoon, boo -boo, but let me tell you something. You know what? You may enjoy it that day, but the call that's going to be tugging at you after the honeymoon is over, that's what you're going to have to be worried about when you need to be faithful, when you need to be at home with. I ain't got no help here. In the name of the devil is a liar. We don't go everywhere. We don't watch everything. They tell us you don't let everybody lay hands on you. Can I give y'all this right quick? I'm just extra I ain't back to the school of theology, but here. Now watch the text. Let me give it to you, especially last week. All right. So there's a text of the Bible says, lay hands something on no man. Now the priest of the text is telling you. That it is for the presbytery, for those of us who make preachers, pastors, elders, anointed be an apostle, because people's everything now. I ain't never seen so many apostles. I went to one church, everybody in there was, I said, where's the membership? Because all y'all leaders. No leaders. He the bishop, he the apostle, and he the bishop, and he, come on, somebody, and, 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 and she, Y'all all sit up in the same house. He said, lay hands, something on nobody. Watch this here, something on no man. Come here. Be not a partaker of another man's sins and keep thyself pure. Can I, can I be like I am at home? So, so, so what it is, is that from the, pres the Presbyterian standpoint, we're not supposed to just ordain everybody. Because they can preach. Because they can scale. Because they can prophesy. We don't lay hands on everybody because of their lifestyle. That means we've endorsed them. I started running like that, I know my wife would be thinking. He better not, I told him, don't be doing all that moving. 
He said, I come home talking about all this, all that. I'm going to push him out the bed. Come on, come on. And this is what he wants to do. He wants you to be able to function in your scene. 
So he wants you to leave the hotel room and come here and dance. What I'm trying to do, the people in Western New York, I'm exposed to the devil to y'all so that we can be, we're going to turn up so we can be the ones that go get these folks out of here. Hallelujah. I want you young women, when these preachers come up to y'all and scratch it in your head for you to tell pastor, I need you to go with me, they has a point for you. Come on, somebody. I should get some head claps in here for that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can't preach to me and sleep with me too. Come on, somebody. I got no help out here. You can't. You can't never be laying with you at on Christmas and your birthday. You gotta be by yourself because see at home with his family. He ain't leaving his family. Whoa, whoa. Tell three people he talking, he talking, he talking. Oh, don't get scared now. Go. Hallelujah. Preachers get your life by saying that. Hallelujah. Real preacher ain't got no business. I ain't supposed to have to worry about my pastor. Come on, somebody to call. Whenever you sleep with your sheep, you pervert it. Y'all don't like this kind of teacher. Can I have about five more minutes? Let me get hook up. I don't care what you're doing. I don't care how low down this, but what I am going to say, a preacher is not supposed to be a part of it. <laughs> Carry yourself right. Conduct yourself right. Somebody I was just having a dollar tree yesterday. Don't pick on me, I ain't cheap. But I love the Dollar Tree, say amen. I'm going to get my jelly beans. Come on, somebody. They got a whole section with profit tape. Y'all ain't talking. And the old mother was in there, and I was coming out, and she was walking in. And she said, hey, profit tape. And I said, oh, God bless you, brother. And then I hear with this, glad I was doing what's right, say amen. Sometimes me and first lady, you know, because I'm an alpha male. Come on, somebody. But she wanna go make a female, you know what I'm saying? And every now and again, she we have one of them without me disagreements, and she hit me with this. You better watch out, you don't know who watching you. You don't know who watching you. You don't know who saw you preach. You don't know who saw you go forth and you bless their life. And then come on, somebody, now you trying to hit on them. Come on, come on. Look at somebody say, but the devil is a liar. Oh, don't get a car. I said the devil is. Oh, I just messed up somebody's hookup tonight. I ain't got no help here. I just blew somebody's spot up. You know what I mean? Yeah, talking about tape. You don't know what no one was going to do. What's your wife going to say? I do know what my wife will do. Because right. I know the God in her. Yeah. Plus, I'm a bad dude, first lady. I'm old. I know I ain't going to trick myself. I told my church while I served, I know these young girls don't look no old bugger like me. I told my wife, nobody will trick me, baby. Don't come on. <laughs> but watch this. Women, if I can hold my wife right now, when I walk by you, you will smell her. When she get on the elevator, and some dude come man, she fine, but there's some kid and he smell me. I ain't got no help around here. Because we leave in the woman. Y'all ain't talking to me right here. And then I have a son, and I got a daughter, and I got grandchildren, and my son need to know that his daddy who, you know, my son will defend me. You have to kill him. I'm talking about killing graveyard. Hey, hallelujah. Why would he go like that? Only to find out that what they said was true. I'm not greater than uh, anybody. They can't handle me because I'm consistent. I ain't got no girlfriends. I ain't got no boyfriends. I ain't got no children. Can I hop over here with the Lord? Glory. Give God praise right there. I'm hopping over here because from now on, when the wrong thing 
things happen. You know, y'all, they gonna smell this and throw it to you. Oh, yeah, God. Give God some praise right now. Amen. And we ain't talking about the prophet. Amen. Let me give you this. The third door to go is the door of sodomy in and out of marriage. Because lust perverts itself. Marriage is honorable. The bed is undefiled. But that don't mean you can do everything in there. Remember, you're representing God. Hallelujah. See, that type of stuff is, is desecrating and manipulation of the temple, especially the prophet's mind. Can I talk to you? When you have the mouth of the prophet, because there's many prophets and prophets in here. Some of you, I can come to you and reach out. I see the anointing on your mind. But the prophet's mouth is the prophetess. And y'all, let me give y'all a quick lesson. Don't get offended when you want somebody to call you a prophetess. That is not against your gift. That's just the female version of the prophet. How we got so much perversions is when you came in with this stuff called unisex. God said in the beginning, he said, I created man in my image and in my likeness, I created or them. Come on, somebody. You understand? We have to be careful that we don't do any everything with this. Because we're going to speak clean words out of it. I know this is so for some of y'all, but am I clean? I ain't been vulgar. Am I? Your mouth means everything to a preacher, male or female. Your mouth, what we say, we have the attributes of God. So God spoke, come on somebody, let there be, and darkness comprehended not the light. Just with a word, when we speak, we can speak something that's not existing into existence with our mouth. And so you can't do every tangible thing with your mouth and be effective behind the sacred desk. Y'all all right? Hallelujah. Oh my God, y'all don't tell me. Hallelujah. 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 And then the door of homosexuality, it is a defiance of God's order and creation. It's a tip of God's authority. The last door is, that was number four, the last door is the door of men or the love of money. You understand? You can't let the fact that, how many you want money so bad to you miss church, you don't pray, you don't come on somebody. Because these things, ain't nothing wrong with it, come on somebody. It's the love that will get you. Hallelujah. But listen, the devil is alive. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, the devil is alive. Say, come on, say, neighbor. That devil is alive. Here we go, Calvin, the Bible says, Luke 22, 32, but I have prayed for thee that thy faith, young Roman said, fail not. And then he gives you an instruction. And when thou art converted, strengthen. <laughs> See, y'all missed your shout. Jesus knew Peter was going to fall. He was going to fail because in the verses below in the same chapter, Peter denies Jesus three times. But Jesus prays, then Peter fails. That messed me up. I could have swallowed it. If you had prayed for Peter, and he failed, I could have swallowed it. Even if I had prayed for Peter, then he fell. But the text says, Jesus prayed that his faith fell not. And then he goes and denies the Savior three times. So search the word. Hallelujah. Pass out the word. Hallelujah. I fell on the word fail. Hallelujah. It stood out. In the Greek, the word fail among many meanings is the word lipo. A primary verb. What it means is to be absent, to be destitute, 
to be wanting question or to lack. In other words, Peter was saved, but he lacked something. And that was, he would, listen, Peter lacked something then that he was going to possess later. Because over there in Acts chapter number two, Peter has an upper room experience. And when Peter gets the Holy Ghost, the Bible said that the anointing gets on Peter so strong that within about eight days, hallelujah, Peter preached a sermon and like God, 3,000 folk got saved. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the devil is a liar. And that's what I come to tell y'all tonight. Uh, I know some of this has been kind of strong for you because you wanted to shout through the message. Uh, that's why I didn't bother you all. Uh, I still did away in my hands uh, when you was giving God praise because God was saturating you so that when the word came, uh, you could be sensible to the anointing. Uh, and I come to tell you that if I name anything tonight uh, that had got on some of you, uh, if I name any sin uh, that you may have got caught up in, uh, and the devil is accusing you uh, and telling you that you're not going to be nothing. Uh, I think I heard Brother Deontay say, uh, I come to tell folks. Uh, that's what he said. He said, I come to tell folks uh, that no matter what people said, uh, about you, no matter what you went through, uh, that God can still use you. Is that right? Uh, and that's why I said the devil is a liar. Uh, because God said he's getting ready uh, to bring some of y'all out. Uh, there's some of you in here now uh, that three months from now, uh, you will be on another level. Uh, your feet are getting ready uh, to touch soil that you never dreamed of. Uh, opportunities are getting ready to come. Uh, because the devil is a liar. Uh, I think I might as well give you my stuff topic. Uh, here it is, Clarence. Uh, the devil desire uh, that he may sift you as weak. Uh, but notice what the text says. Uh, I pray. Uh, tell your neighbor, say neighbor. Uh, say Jesus prayed for me. Uh, oh, that's enough to give him some praise. Uh, get up on your feet uh, and have a proper close. Uh, let's ride down the trail. Uh, look at your neighbor and say neighbor. Uh, the wind is blowing. Uh, the storm is raging. Uh, Billows are roaring. Uh, and breakers are dashing. Uh, but in the midst uh, of what you've been going through, uh, God that's telling me to tell you I can't hear you God I say God that's telling me to tell you that the winds of adversity have been coming against you the devil's been fighting you you've been telling yourself after you fail you've been going to God and saying Lord here I am you've been saying Lord please forgive me I failed you again, and the devil's been accusing you for the Bible said that the devil is an accuser of the brethren. He stepped before the throne night and day, accusing the brethren. But I'm so glad that they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of the testimony. I find the neighbor and say, neighbor, the devil is a liar. So Jesus prayed, Jesus prayed, and because Jesus prayed, I can do all things. Come on in and help us out. Give me some piano. Get on the simple part. And say, neighbor, Jesus prayed. He prayed for me. Aren't you glad that the Lord I find your name. I say, I find your name. I say, name. I don't care what you're going through. If you can hold on, come on, get ready to bring you out. I heard the Bible say that God specializes in things impossible. And all this night, this Sunday night, before the convocation, God told me to tell you, by the time you get to progressive, on Monday night, you will be on the whole, another level. God, I died. I know the devil has been messing with you and telling you that you can't make it. But the devil is a liar. Get from behind those chairs. The same devil, what you did for evil, God, let's go turn this over good. I went to a meeting one night, 
right now. The spirit of witchcraft. But you're stepping through with sicknesses in your body. And you pray it when you get up to the altar. Come on, somebody. There's some of y'all need to get up to the altar. Y'all are praying this stuff that y'all got here. Come on, God, that altar. Come out here. Come out here now. Y'all are looking at somebody. Y'all are looking at y'all. Y'all are looking at The Bible said, he that wins souls is wise. Y'all ain't talking to me. God is going to touch you. You like to dance, but listen. Hallelujah. Who got some honor? Who got some honor? Hand sanitizer. Work to me. Give me your feet. church, you go dance. And when you get through dancing, God will take you to a place that you've never been. And when you get through dancing, how are you going to look? And tears going to be everywhere. And there's a spirit that's been after you since you was a child. Move out the way. But tonight God's going to break it. All I want you to do is run around this place one time. Go. Somebody get down.
this ministry carries an expense. I want everybody, young folk, I know y'all have it. Everybody get $20. I'm going to get 50 Come on, you want to be blessed? Where the offer comes from, run from it. Listen, God ain't going let what I see fall to the ground. Then, I'll get a 50. Don't go to work with the go. That's how folks bless the blessing.
uh, Jane Hartfield, actually. Jane, I think so. Even Hartfield will be there. So we want you to come out each and every night for a uh, convocation and enjoy the service. Amen. Certainly, we want to give God the praise. Amen. Amen. For our youth evangelist leader. Amen. Minister Deontay. I'm so grateful. Amen. That he's a servant of God. Amen. I was preaching at that church. Amen. And while I was preaching, the Lord told me he's the one. Amen. I was trying to preach and I was trying to look at him at the same time. Amen. But God blessed. Amen. And I'm praying that God will keep him. Amen. To bless him, amen. To do God's will. Amen. We're going to ask him to come and dismiss us. Amen. And have final words. Amen. We thank you all for coming out tonight. Amen. I'm so grateful tonight that God has blessed us. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. Amen. And receive. So, uh, I'm calling them my little, my little sisters or cousins. I don't know. But um, I had them on program to uh, do our sermonic solo, and uh, I really want them to. I want them to say. So are all y'all here? Amen. Come on. Come on, baby. Come on. It's a good song too. Amen. Come on, baby.
everybody right there. Lord, we thank you for the service. We thank you for this time of gathering. We thank you for the move that you put inside the service. We thank you for your glory. We thank you for lives being changed. We thank you for minds and hearts being renewed. We ask God that you bless and keep us as we go our separate destinations. Turn away seen and unseen danger. All drunk drivers, all accidents, God, allow everyone in here, everyone who came to support and serve you to make it to their destination safely. And we thank you for the next appointed time that we may meet, which will be this week for convocation. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. You are this